Okay. When all set. I'll call the uh, Lindroy Planning Board meeting to order for June uh, 1st of 2011. Hard to believe it's June already. Uh, I'd like to point out uh, for everyone who's here, in case we have uh, an emergency and need to evacuate, this room has two exits on the right-hand side of the audience, at the front and the back of the room. And if we do need to evacuate, we ask you to proceed through the exit closest to you, go outside, move away from the building, don't come back into our fire officials. I've instructed everyone to do so. I hope it's not raining. <laughs> and I'd like to ask everyone to please rise. We'll pledge allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll just hang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we move a quorum. Uh, let's see, Lynn is absent. Uh, he's away on business. I'll appoint Dana to vote for Lynn. And uh, Tom Freda is uh, absent because he has a banquet dinner to go to, and he's an ex officio, so that stays. Uh, there's no, uh, no filling in for that. So we have uh, eight voting uh, members. And I'd like to ask everyone to please, uh, when you speak or anything, move, get a little close to the microphone, because evidently there's been trouble that some people can't hear all the members talking and everything. That, it goes to staff also, please. So, speak in the microphone, speak up, and anyone who's also speaking, speak in the microphone, please. Our meeting is divided into two parts. Um, the first part is administrative board work where we get our business done. The second part, this being the first uh, Wednesday of the month, we get uh, to do a uh, new site or subdivision plans. So, uh, we'll proceed to administrative board work, and we have. Uh, one, two, extension requests. The first one is a Cull the Cullen subdivision. There's a request for an additional one year on the conditional approval, and this will uh, be extended to uh, June 3rd of uh, 2012. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> members of the board, uh, in your packet, you'll find a letter from Joe Maynard from Benchmark Engineering uh, requesting a one year extension for the Cullen subdivision on uh, High Range Road. Uh, they are continuing to work on uh, remaining, finalizing the remaining uh, conditions of the original approval and they expect to be able to do so. Uh, they are requesting an additional year to ensure that they have sufficient time to meet those conditions. There have been no changes to the ordinance or regulations that would affect this project, and staff is supportive of the request. Okay, thank you, Tim. And okay, a motion. And Mr. Chairman, make a motion that uh, we grant the applicant's request for a one-year extension to June 3rd of 2012. Okay, motion made by Dana, second by Rick. Any discussion by the board? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstentions uh, and chair votes affirmative, and uh, the extension request is granted for a year till June 3rd of 2012. Next extension request is the uh, DeFava site plan. This is a request for a six month extension of uh, conditional approval, and this is to December 1st of 2011. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, in your packet, final letter from Todd Connors from Long Beach Development Associates. Uh, this is related to the DeFava Fire Protection Site Plan approval on Enterprise Drive. Uh, they are working again to continue to meet the conditions of the approval. Uh, this is the third extension for this particular project, uh, primarily due to economic conditions. Uh, we, again, there have been no changes to the ordinance or regulations that uh, impact the project, and staff is supportive of the request. <coughs> okay, thanks, Tim. A uh, question <coughs> on this. Are they sure the six months is going to be enough since this is the third extension, I, I really don't want to be back here in six months for another one. Uh, the maximum the board can really do on something like this, our, site, our subdivision regulations are clear that you're allowed one year in a conditional pr approval extension. The site plan regulations are relatively vague. We allow one year on final approval, but there is no specific language for conditional approval. Given the fact that the original conditional approval was valid for a six month period, that's been the period that they've requested extensions for. Are they sure they can uh, complete everything within that six months? Or that's the impression I've been given, but that's the I same. Think, I think it's more associated with the economics I agree. than it is the conditions of the approval, my opinion. I, I mean, I, I'm comfortable with Garrett granting them a year. Yeah, it's certainly within the board's purview uh, to do so. You know, I just, you know, it's a lot, you know, it costs them time and money to keep coming back for extensions and. I'd rather make sure that they're going to be able to finish it on this extension. 
That's the way. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we grant the applicant's request for an extension, but extend it out to one year rather than six months. Second. Okay, this will be to uh, June 1st, June 1st of uh, 2012. Okay, motion by Dana, second by uh, Rick. Any discussion by the board? <coughs> Seeing none. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Sentences, sheriff's affirmative, and the uh, De Fava site plan has been granted a uh, one year extension to June 1st of 2012. Okay, uh, our minutes of May 4th, 11th, and 25th. I'll take uh, those separately in case anyone was absent and uh, needs to abstain. So, minutes of May 4th. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion made by Dana. Second by Rick. Any discussion by the board? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstain. And Chuck abstains because Chuck was absent. Uh, she was primitive in the minutes of uh, May 4th, uh, 2011, are approved. Okay, May 11th. So move that the minutes be uh, approved. Second. Okay, motion by Dana, second by Rick. Any, dis any discussion? Say none. All those in favor of the May 11th minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstentions? Abstain. And Chuck uh, abstains as he was not uh, present. And Chair what's affirmative and uh, minutes of uh, May 11th uh, are approved. Okay, May 25th. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, motion by Dana, second by Rick. Uh, any discussion? It was a very, uh, a very short meeting, so. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those the post say nay. Extensions? Extension. Okay, Rick. <laughs> Rick, Mary, Lynn, and uh, Rick, Mary, Laura, and Letha. Okay. Chair was affirmative, and the uh, minutes of May 25th, uh, 2011 are approved. Okay, discussion of the town staff. I'll do John. Uh, Nothing this evening. Okay, Tim. Uh, first, just wanted to introduce uh, Jeff Belanger, who is seated next to Libby. Uh, Jeff is a grad student at Harvard who will be interning with us this summer. Uh, this year, uh, despite the fact that our budget was cut for interns, the uh, London Area Housing and Redevelopment Authority stepped up to provide funding for an intern over the summer. Uh, so Jeff will be working uh, primarily with Andre and uh, John Vogel on doing a business retention and expansion uh, mm -hmm. update. Uh, business inventory project for the airport area for us over the course of the summer. So just wanted to introduce him to the board and welcome him aboard. Welcome. Welcome. Yes, welcome. welcome. Yeah. Did he be uh, attending all of our meetings? Uh, probably, probably not. not. <laughs> we'll see. We're going to see how much of an education do you want. <laughs> we we want to be able to. This one is we'll go from there. We want to be able to use his budget on the actual work, not as so much on the overtime for the meetings. Okay. <laughs> yeah, some of it could be a waste of time. That's <laughs> We don't need to waste the town's money. So. <laughs> we will involve Jeff in some of the planning related things. He is going for a planning degree, so I'm going to try to get as much of that exposed as possible. But again, since LHRA is doing the funding, it is primarily going to be an economic development uh, project this summer. Okay, good. Well, thanks, Tim. Uh, welcome again. Anything else? Two other things uh, that unfortunately I neglected to include in the packet, so I'm going to read these into the record. Uh, first is a governmental land use request uh, on behalf of the town. The uh, letter is from uh, Steve Cotton, uh, the Administrative Support uh, Coordinator for the town. Uh, uh, dear board members, please find this letter as the request of the town of London Area for governmental use of property under RSA 67454 for the property located at 535B Mammoth Road, known as the North Fire Station. Uh, this is the old North Fire Station, Map 15, Lot 205. Uh, per resolution number 2011-2, demolition of North Fire Station adopted by the town council on March 7th which authorized the town manager to secure necessary permits and execute an agreements to demolish the North Fire Station. During the month of April, the demolition was completed. In addition, per that resolution, the town needs to complete soil remediation activities at the location with the Department of Environmental Services funding available for this work through June 30th. During the first two weeks of May 2011, a soil remediation activity took place and was completed on May 16th. Lastly, per the resolution, the town is best served by removing the structure and reserving the area for additional parking and future space needs for the senior center. At this time, we are seeking approval from the planning board for the following. One, to allow us to pave the former footprint of the demolished North Fire Station, which is approximately 32 feet by 86 feet. The intent is to eliminate the potential dust bowl, mud pit, and unstable walking surface for our seniors. 
and allow an overflow parking area for them to park. Uh, two, add bollards and or barrier is required per code to protect the existing propane tank, which supplies propane to the senior center. And three, loam and seed remaining non-paved areas, which be located to the north and west of the sides of the former footprint of the north fire station. Uh, attached, there are some aerial uh, views of the site, plus the uh, council resolution, the EnviroSense environmental site plan, and the assessing department cards. Uh, the question for the planning board on this is if uh, you wish to hold a public hearing under the statute, uh, at which time we would be reviewing the plan per our normal regulations and making non-binding recommendations, or the other alternative would be to not hold a public hearing and allow the construction to proceed forward. Okay, how does the board feel? No hearing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah I don't think uh, we need to... Uh, would be a, yeah. So, anyone uh, anyone uh, disagree that uh, or anyone feel we need a public hearing? I set up a question. Yes. W were they intending on paving it with regular asphalt paving, yes. or were they going to okay. asphalt? I suppose that's the best for people walking on a stable surface. All right. Yep. So uh, I will pass that along to the town manager's office. Yep. Thank you. Uh, it can be handled administratively. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> the letter in the file, the request from Giovanni Varani on behalf of his mother, uh, Patricia Varani. Uh, this is regarding the uh, property at 217 Rockingham Road. Uh, the board may recall uh, back last March, uh, the board allowed uh, Brown Limousine to park uh, limousines on the lot and use a small portion of the building. Uh, they have approximately 10 limousines parked on the lot, a month to month lease that's looked at as a temporary lease while they're seeking alternative tenants that can make better use of the property. A uh, code enforcement officer contacted Mr. Verani on March 29th and informed that the tenant change constitutes a change of use and required a site plan. Uh, informed Richard that a fully engineered site plan and planning board review was beyond what we could afford on the temporary tenant that was paying $1,000 a month. However, the income received for the temporary tenant was much welcomed by my mother to help partially cover taxes and other holding expenses to the property. Uh, based on a recommendation from members of town staff during a meeting held on uh, April 6, 2010, you granted my mother a one-year extension of the waiver for the site plan and the use. Uh, recently, the code enforcement officer sent a letter to Mrs. Verani telling her the one-year temporary use of the site was expired. Uh, they've met with uh, myself, John Trottier, and Richard, and worked with Hancock Engineering to design an existing conditions plan of the property. Uh, everyone is in agreement that the site plan is consistent with an office and retail use, but current market conditions have not allowed her to rent the building in this way. She's asking that the board consider another extension that would allow Brown Limo to continue there as a month-to-month -month tenant until such time she can rent the building to a tenant consistent with the site plan. Uh, from a property perspective, keep, please keep in mind that the use is allowed by zoning. Brown Limousine is a fellow taxpayer in the town of London area and owner of the property across the street. Limos have been parked lost, across the street for the last three years. This is not a major impact to the neighborhood and actually a less intense use than the retail use the site plan is currently approved for. Uh, the real estate economy that we're currently experiencing requires more uses to be more creative and forgiving to keep a tenant in the building. If Brown is forced to uh, move for the building, uh, become vacant, not allow it to retain insurance on the vacant building. Additionally, in this economy, vacant buildings have a tendency broken into for the value of copper pipes, which causes more grief and expense to the town fire and police departments. Uh, from personal perspective, Mrs. Verani is an 84-year-old woman on a fixed income who's been a long-term resident taxpayer and contributor to the town for over 60 years. Uh, I know that London Air is trying to be a business-friendly environment, and in my opinion, working with smaller landlords that have been long-term residents and contributors to the town will be considered business-friendly. Please let us know. Regards, Giovanni Verani, on behalf of Patricia Verani. Uh, we do have uh, John Weigler uh, representing the Veranis here tonight, if there are any specific questions. Uh, essentially, the request in front of the board is uh, to consider uh, allowing an extension for that one-year temporary use of the property that was granted last year. Yeah, I don't recall there being any problems uh, over the, uh, the past year. Uh, with it. The, the issue isn't that it can't be used for that purpose. There isn't a site plan. The site plan that is approved for, for that site is for office slash retail. Okay. So this is not consistent with the approved site plan. However, the board was willing to waive the requirement for mm -hmm. site plan on a temporary basis last year. Yep. And parking lots always look good and all too. So yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. they're not parking stuff all over the place. I mean, if we had uh, violations from the uh, building inspector or something, that would the be only one thing. Which the only communication was after that one year it expired, informing them yeah. that it expired at that the point. the expiration of it, so. Um, any input from the board on this? How does the board feel? So we're making another one year. 
Yeah, if you were to do one year, I would uh, date it from tonight so it would expire June 1st of next year. Mm -hmm. They're not currently using the building itself, they're just parking things in the parking lot? That's my understanding. Uh, Mr. Weigler could clarify that if. Yeah. Uh, John, you know, when you come down here, just your name and address uh, for the record. We just got uh, one, uh, one question so far, anyway. Uh, John Weigler, 74 Page Road. Um, the building currently, they, they just rent a small spot, like in the garage area downstairs. So they do have, you know, a desk and a couple of chairs and things in there. That's it. So you're just doing the, you know, the business portion of it? The well, the, the thing is, is right, we're, tr we're trying to rent it out as an office or, or retail, but uh, currently unable to do so. I think it's been on the market for over a year now. And haven't had any takers, I guess. So <clears throat> they've um, they've maintained the plowing, and uh, you know, at least we're able to get insurance on it. So mm -hmm. we'd like to keep them in there as as long as we could. Um, <clears throat> you know, if we get a uh, a tenant that would rent the building, they would be out, and um, the uh, tenant would be consistent with what the site plan has. But um, unfortunately, we don't have a tenant right now. Who, who meets that? So we're just hoping for an extension. You know. Are you getting any interest? We've had interest in uh, daycare centers and things like that that also have to have variances and right. site plans. And it just seems like uh, the people that are out there are people that need site plans, which cost twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, you know. And so that's why we, we went to the, um, <clears throat> with the staff and, and with, Hancock Engineering to at least get an existing conditions plan to show what we have there and we have uh, 22 spaces and the building is of such that if you did uh, office or retail space the the uh, parking is adequate for that type of a use so you know we don't want to come in there and have to redo the whole uh, site plan all the time so that's why we're looking to try to get somebody in there with a retail or you know <clears throat> office. Mr. Hey, uh, John. Yeah. Tim, question. Seeing that they're, they're using, a, albeit a very small space in the building, as an office, if, if that's what I just understood, right. doesn't that fall under the regulations that, that that business is being ran out of that? The, the office use of it, yes, does, but the, the limousine service is considered not to be consistent with the site plan because it didn't specify that. It, the, the site plan was actually for the Children's Museum and it's specific to the Children's Museum, our zoning officer has basically interpreted that retail or office use, professional office use, would be consistent with that So it doesn't fall. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Do you, any idea when you may find an appropriate tenant? I know that's an open, yeah. a loaded question. <laughs> but. Well, if you would have told, we last year we were in here for the extension and we probably would have said three or four months, but Obviously, it's been a year and, and a couple of months and still nothing, so. Okay, has um, the interest picked up for the appropriate tenant, uh, or is it still pretty much what it has been? It really hasn't picked up as far as um, any tenant that, that we need to get in there, no. I mean, like I said, it's been daycare centers or um, dog, uh, you know, people that would rent the upstairs and have dogs or different things like that, trying to do mixed use mm -hmm. residential commercial, and I guess that's not allowed there. And so I don't know if, <clears throat> if it's worthwhile to try to do a variance or, or something like that as well. But for right now, you know, the limousine is there and they really haven't caused any problems. And, um, you know, I guess it's, it's, you know, service, I'm not too sure what service really means. I mean, they do sell, uh, uh, you know, a, a service, I guess, but in the next breath, they have offices that they run their business <coughs> out. So, right. It's, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Tim. Yeah. It, it's a service, but it's not a retail service. So, I, it's I'm, not my interpretation. It's I don't know. Well, well, you know, I guess if you, <laughs> yeah. you know, you, you, sell, you sell something, you sell a limousine ride, but. Yeah, um, but retail, you know, I retail, mean, it's not like they're doing service yeah. work on it, like fixing their cars and, you know, not like a service station. It's pretty much 
more like a, an office space that has cars parked there. But yeah, the, the, it's more of a, a car rent. It's more of a rental service than a retail. Yeah. The, the catch is there is a specific note on that site plan that says any change of use requires site plan approval. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I understand. That's, that's I mean, I, I'm just I'm looking for a way, you know, so they don't have to keep coming back. I mean, I understand the situation and trying to be a work away so they don't have to keep coming back for an extension all the time, but the, the length I don't see yeah, a way The length of it. extension is completely up to you. And the one year was considered temporary by the board last year. It's whatever length you're comfortable with as a temporary is. Okay, question to the board then. How would the board feel if we granted, made the extension until they find a suitable tenant? I don't feel comfortable about no. it. That's I don't like feel comfortable. Two, three, four, five years. That's approaching the time. time frame. Okay. Right. All right. Mr. Chair, I was There's wondering there. if we might, um, because the zoning is underlying zoning, it does allow this type of use. I would feel comfortable allowing for another year extension, but I do believe it's important for them to come before us so that because it, because the, it does say that the change of use requires a site plan. I, you know, I think we're taking into account the economic times. Um, they have a, a tenant that's not causing trouble for the neighborhood. It is allowed under the zoning. And so, you know, I would propose that we just allow it for another year. But I think we have to keep an eye on it because we don't want to set a precedent that, yeah. that if it says that you have to change the site plan or come in with a site plan that you shouldn't have to come in with a site plan. But I, I do think we have to be business, you know, I mean, friendly. So if we could. Yeah, I think we have to, you know, consider that. And also, you know, I don't think we are really setting any precedent because we're kind of within what what is allowed there. Right. And, Other, if and it, if done, it wasn't allowed under the zoning, you know, I, I think our thing. hands would be tied and we would have to insist on a site plan. But it is allowed under the zoning. So I think we can allow for a year extension. And that would be my. I would like to have a motion. I, that would be my motion. Yeah. Okay, Second Mary's made the motion for a uh, one-year extension. Second by Dana. Any further discussion by the board? And Same that would on. be to June 1st of 2012? Yes. yes. Okay, all those in favor? I'm oh. sorry, could we make it to June 13th because isn't that the meeting, whatever the meeting date is? Whatever the first meeting of June is. Right. Thank you. I think it's a June 3rd. I think that's what we extended the other stuff to. Yeah. That was just based on the date of that. Oh, oh all right. Well, whatever the first meeting of I will, I will make it a, the appropriate change, yes. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Abstentions, sheriff's affirmative. And one of your extension has been uh, Thank you. granted. Thank you. Okay, back to the top here. Mr. Chair. Yes. I'd also like to take a moment. <laughs> to embarrass the heck out of Tim and congratulate him <laughs> oh. on becoming the New Hampshire plan Town Planner of the Year. Very well uh, deserved and uh, I think at least they, uh, they listened to some, some of us here. <laughs> Actually, I'm the co-recipient of the Professional Planner of the Year. The, uh, the other recipient is uh, Chris Parker, the Planning Director in Dover. Um, there was because you guys are both phenomenal, and they couldn't make their decision, so That's I gave it to both of you. It's the first time in the history, right? Yes, it is the first time the association has ever given two awards right. in the same year. Good and uh, I will be attending uh, next Thursday is the uh, the annual conference, uh, at which point they will be making the awards presentation in Keene. And uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, my wife and two kids will be coming with me. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Good. Great. Well, congratulations. Very well Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so moving right along. Okay, we have uh, <laughs> interviews for Art Lodge candidates for the Master Plan Steering Committee. And actually, we have four openings and we have four candidates. One of the openings three is openings. three openings. Uh, uh, what I'll, Don't we have what a I'll business representative? <laughs> what I'll do filled? with the, the board, if you'll indulge me for a second. Uh, on the screen and in your packet is the current uh, roster for the Steering Committee as of today's date. Uh, we currently have representat representatives from the Planning Board, the School Board, the Budget Committee, the Zoning Board, Heritage Commission, and Wanted Area Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Uh, we are awaiting appointments from the Town Council, Conservation Commission, Parks and Rec, uh, and in London Area Trailways. 
There are three at-large uh, members of the committee that are open uh, that the board will be interviewing for tonight, as well as a member of the business community. So there is an opportunity if the board uh, likes the, the candidates we have here tonight. I know that two of them at least uh, do have businesses here in Londonderry that uh, could potentially be added as the business community representative as well. Okay, thank you, Tim. Uh, we'll, we'll go as uh, either as they've come in or the order here. Uh, first candidate is uh, Barbara Mee. And uh, you can come down, sit in the chair, get comfy. In your package, you'll have the letter that uh, Barbara put together for the planning board if you want to refer to that during your uh, interview. Welcome. And uh, actually, I'll start one end of the board, go to the other. And if uh, I'm sure we're going to run out of questions before we probably get to the end. But I'll start with Chris. Uh, well, first off, thank you for uh, volunteering for the position. Um, used to be a neighbor of yours. Oh. <laughs> used to live on Shasta. Uh, <clears throat> main question, Val, it's the same one with all the other candidates. Is for, I presume you're at the at-large representative uh, position. So what, what do you feel that that role should be filling on the master plan committee? Um, well, I think I'm very open-minded. Um, I did a legendary leadership program last year. I learned a lot. Um, I teach civics at the high school. Um, Tim's one of our favorite guest speakers. <laughs> um, and um, I just thought that it really sounded interesting and intriguing to find out a little bit more about what's going on and have a role with some insight, input into discussions, et cetera. So for, for the at-large position, I, there's, uh, we've got the roster there still. I do. Ideally, we'd like to get somebody from North Central and South London area. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, Barbara's position would be for the for the central area. Central, yeah, be geographically, yes. So, well, <laughs> another bowling again. <laughs> uh, obviously, there's there's people that represent the wind um, rise. <laughs> particular areas of concern in the town, like the school board and the council and mm -hmm. the planning um, uh, and budget committees. So. Just kind of what your feel for the at-large position really should be representing from the town. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think since I've lived here for 25 or 26 years in the central location um, with some of the things going on, um, some development, um, traffic, <laughs> more traffic on Shasta. Um, <laughs> you didn't button that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the schools. Um, you know, the closeness of fire and police stations, uh, the fields, um, downtown but not really downtown, so I would see that as, as kind of being a resident of the central area, input about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. <laughs> Scott? Uh, I was just curious, have you served on any other committees? I was the teacher rep to the school board for six years. Um, we've had a student rep to the school board for a long time, and uh, when they decided to have a teacher rep, I volunteered for the first year, and six years later, I decided <coughs> that I needed to step back. But so that's the only one that I've actively done. Okay, David? Welcome, Barbara, and thank you again for volunteering. Um, I believe I read in here you don't have any problems with monthly meetings? Not at all. Okay. How about two meetings a month? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's necessary, um, I, uh, should I say, survived the school board meetings for six years. No, I actually enjoyed every minute of it. Good. I, um, so. it and I mean, I'm asking for a reason because I served on the last one and uh, it can get time consuming. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even one meeting a month, then. And I mean, it's not to say that we expect everybody to make every single meeting, but uh, it's an important thing. And I'm not sure this one will be done in a year. <laughs> yeah. This one is going to be a little more comprehensive than the right. last one. Right. So. Yeah. So I mean, uh, so that that's good to know that you're uh, willing to put in the time and effort. Uh, it probably gives my husband a break if I go out, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's probably home listening. So, and um, the um, only other responsibility I had graduated almost 12 years ago from the high school, <laughs> so he's on his own in Northern Virginia. So I, I wouldn't have any conflicts. Okay, good. 
understood. I don't have any questions. Mary. So do you think your husband's missing those one night a week, a month, <laughs> you know, free time? Could be every other Tuesday. So you might have for something? Um, just thank you for stepping up. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Please. Barbara, thank you as well. And uh, Barbara and I actually were on the same leadership Londonderry um, graduating class. And um, from personal experience, I can say she asked, I, I can say she asked lots of very inquisitive questions. <laughs> um, I didn't let too many things slide. So, welcome. Barbara, thank, thank you. Um, from a, the school board side, you're not going to be tired when we do these meetings, right? So, when, you, when you're teaching, right? Never. Okay. No. You <laughs> get used to, make to sure, it. You, know. you get used to it. The, I don't want the kids complaining that you're sleeping. No. <laughs> no. Uh, other than that, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to thank you very much for uh, volunteering. It's very appreciative to have, uh, have some good volunteers, which we do. And, uh, I'll just say from my perspective, both Barbara, uh, me and uh, Barbara Marzik from the uh, Social Studies Department at the high school have uh, been very accommodating. They've been very good to work with. Uh, I really do enjoy the uh, couple of times a <coughs> year I'm able to go and visit their classes, and uh, I think she would be a great addition to the committee. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks now. <laughs> and Mary, Mary Tetro. <laughs> Um, Mary Tetro, 15 Isabella Drive, which is central. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll voice my, my thanks to you too for uh, volunteering for it, Mary. Um, so, I, I, while it's central, I think you've got a sensitivity to the north part, and I don't see any other candidates that have uh, looked for um, uh, membership on the uh, committee that uh, can't have you know, experience of living in the north part of town. and personally being someone from that area I appreciate having someone up <laughs> on the board that knows the area um, so same question um, you know I think you know, I heard the right things from uh, Barbara about you know what's the at large person other people bring expertise yeah, did a great job yeah <laughs> um, well I've lived in London Dairy for 24 years first my husband and I and our two stepkids rented up in North London Dairy on, on Noise Road, or as we called it, No Yes Road. Um, <laughs> and then we moved to a house that's right behind the movie theater. So it's really on um, Lancaster Drive, real close to 102. So I'm kind of sensitive to those issues of that area too. And like one of my big things is I want to have a safe way to cross 102. I brought this up in a master plan committee a long time ago. And they said it wasn't safe to have a, a crosswalk um, there, but maybe there was grant money for a pedestrian bridge. And then uh, when we looked around to for another house, we just were like, wow, we really um, want to stay in Londonderry. And um, so now I live over just past the kindergarten. But I think, you know, I see this as a time of real importance for, for the town because um, I said in my letter, you know, I lived through and experienced the AES Granite Ridge building and how divisive it was for the town. And I think that Woodmont Commons has the potential for being quite divisive for the town. Um, and that, like as Mary or Barbara said, I can get along well with people. You know, I, um, I'm a Democrat. I run for office often. <laughs> so I hear a lot from people, a, a lot of, from uh, Republicans. And, you know, I, um, I don't argue with them, I just say, like, I'm glad you vote, because we're not going to change each other's mind. But I think I can disagree without being disagreeable. So I see some big issues like the widening of Route 93, um, the effect of the Woodmont or Commons plan, and trying to make that as good as it can be for both the developer and the residents of the town. And um, uh, let's see. Or something else, but I forgot. I put it in my letter. Open <laughs> space. What's that? Open oh, space. Open space. Yeah, I didn't get that question. <laughs> oh yeah, preserving open space, and our rural areas. The town's been really in the forefront on that. Mark Oswald and some others, you know, started us doing that. I don't know, 12 years ago, 15, 10 years ago, and we've been able to buy a lot of open space early on. Um, but I think that's something you always hear people say, I love my town because it's got apple trees and apple orchards. And uh, 
Yeah, that was my other thing. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Rick, I just want to say thank you, and you'll probably have to get over your shyness. <laughs> my husband, Phil, says, I'm just waiting for Mary to come out of her shell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but thank you. Thank you. I'm all set. Thank you very much for volunteering. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Uh, from the sounds of it, you have uh, the energy and everything to uh, go for at least three or four meetings a month for two years, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I survived budget committee. <laughs> spare time in your hands, Dana? Pardon? <laughs> you a spare time in your hands there, Dana. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. I work part-time. My stepkids are grown up and yeah. off in North Carolina and Miami. So mm -hmm. I don't have as many demands on me <laughs> <laughs> now as I used to. Oh, that's all I had. Thank you again. Sure. My thanks as well. No, I have no questions. Mm -hmm. Mary? I think it'd be a great addition, Mary. Thank you for stepping out. No questions. Thanks for all your energy and involvement. Yes, um, thank you for, for stepping up for this. And I, I noticed a bullet point on there that you, the past five years, have volunteered as a kindergarten helper. And as a mother of two kindergartners, um, I thank you from the bottom <laughs> of my heart. Well, when I got off budget committee, um, I thought really hard for maybe a year about another way to volunteer. And I really love kids. And my kids were grown up and gone, but my neighbor, Sarah Keller, had started a kindergarten class. So I go in every Friday afternoon. I miss it once in a while when I'm busy at work. And I just love it. Those kids are just so wonderful. And you know, they call me Mrs. Mary. It's just one of the highlights of my week, so. It's a great way to end the week, huh? Mm. What's that? Is it a great way to end the week, isn't it? It really is. Sometimes I go back to work after, and sometimes I go home. But when I go back to work, I work for Marilyn Hoffman. She always says I'm like beaming. <laughs> you know, I'm so happy from seeing my kids. Thank you. John? Uh, Mary, thank you uh, for, for stepping up. Uh, you list a, a bunch of items uh, in, in what's affecting the future of our town. What do you find to be the most pressing issue? What do you see as the most pressing I issue for our town? Right now, I would say the Woodmont Commons development. Uh, I think you guys, as the planning board, have seen some of the divisiveness and um, you know, high emotions running with this project. And um, I think it can be a great project. I mean, I, th I sometimes think, well, you know, maybe at some point when I, we retire, it'd be nice to live there and be able to walk to some stores and stuff like that. But I think it's such a massive project um, and it's gonna go on for years and years um, that at this planning board approval stage, or you know the series of meetings um, that it's really key um, to, to look at how best to satisfy the developer and they make their money and they get you know what they want but also how best to satisfy the townspeople the town government I mean they say there's going to be a new school um, well fine and as I said I'm not really for or against this proposal but who's going to pay for the school you know, there's going to be a new school one day. So I, th I think that has some pretty large impact on the town. What do you think? I agree with you. I think there's, there's a lot of impact that's going to happen with that particular project. I, I think that's probably the biggest one that's going to impact this town for maybe a generation or so. We'll see. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I just don't want to leave that one alone because as Len Wiles pointed out last at the last meeting, um, our schools right now are under um, crowded. So there's room for, for the schools to absorb the students, any students that would come in within the next, oh, good. you know, five or 10 years, really. Yes, there is capacity and, um, in the school system to handle what and it's And it's gonna oh, be good. a very slow. Um, That's right. The, the, yeah. the, the housing that would bring the children in is not what they're considering starting with in this project. So really, we sh I, I wish we wouldn't um, panic people that we're gonna have a new school built. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, sorry for saying that. No, I, uh, yeah, it's I, fine. <laughs> you're absolutely right. The, the numbers that were brought out, we had this, this conversation in the last school board meeting. Uh, I believe the numbers that were brought out for communities such as that is, is like 0.8. Right. And, and it's on not average. even. Yeah. On average. Yeah, and it's not even 0.2 based on uh, a similar 
uh, setup that we have in, in town already. So it's so uh, we have loads slow. of room in our we schools. We do right now have do, enough yeah. room. There's over a thousand like empty spaces, you know, wow. in, a, in a school system. Well, that that's great. Well, well, I don't want to leave that one alone either, <laughs> because <laughs> they're not actually empty spaces. All it means right now is that we have room to do some really great things in the school system because we have room. Yeah, you know? We don't have art on a cart. We don't have music on a cart. We have actual rooms for the music department and the, and the art department, which, you know, only enhances our children's education. So while I'm not you know, hoping that we get those 600 students or whatever number of students that might show up at the end of this, uh, you know, development. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's not something that's going to require us to build a school next week, you know. And I like the way our, you know, the numbers that are in our schools now, because really it allows us to meet the needs of those students very well. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And thank you also, Mary. Thanks, I'm glad sir. you uh, have the interest. <laughs> okay, next uh, is uh, Russ Legue. And uh, Russ is a former planning board member and a former chairman also. <laughs> Good evening, Russ Legue, 2 Fiddler's Ridge Road. Uh, let's start with Chris again. And, uh, again, wow. <laughs> Once more, thank you for uh, volunteering for the uh, position. So in your letter, uh, you were interested in the at-large, but obviously you're very involved in the business community as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that both you and Deb would be a fit on either or of those situations. Sure. Can you talk to that a little bit? Uh, yeah, it, um, personally it doesn't matter to me which, which slot I would fit in. Um, I think I uh, was the first approach that there was some at-large positions, so um, those are the ones that I... You know, that, those are the ones that I, I concentrated on. I, I don't know if I realized that there was a business position that was still open. At the mm -hmm. time, so. Would you be would you entertain taking that position yeah. one yeah. or the other? Yeah, sure. So it doesn't matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. No. Okay, uh, and so you, you've served on the planning board back in the 1990s. Why? <laughs> in the 1990s, yeah, we met, uh, we met every Wednesday night all year round and would go to anywhere from 11 o'clock until uh, 1, 1.30. Uh, I've morning. heard about those, but yeah. we've only just recently experienced yeah. those kind of durations. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it was back six. Back in my intern days. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we kind of, you know, it's kind of a, it's funny how uh, life circles on itself. At, at that point in time, Tim was uh, one of the interns, and now, and now I serve on the London Area Housing Redevelopment uh, Committee as one of the commissioners, and uh, we funded a new intern. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's. I didn't realize that until I was just sitting here tonight and heard the conversation, <laughs> and then it dawned on me that oh yeah, Tim was an intern at one point in time back in the '90s, wasn't he? <laughs> Doing the cellular telephone That's ordinances correct. for us, I think it was. So. Yep, yep. Tim's famous for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> By the way, Tim, congratulations Thank on you. you. <laughs> uh, I'm good. Okay, Rick. Okay, the only thing I see, what's a purple category on your letter? That's my category. That's to remind um, me that I need to print it for the planning board. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said we have in, a purple you <laughs> folder in the assessing <laughs> office, but you don't want to be in that. It's your problem file. I, I, oh, I would have been stumped on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have known the answer. <laughs> Uh, I'm dealing with a new computer, okay. <laughs> I guess being a planning board member, uh, you'll fit right in. So. I Thank thought you. maybe it was a new new section for Woodmont. No. <laughs> well, we've had the purple folder for Purple zone. <laughs> uh, uh, just curious, so why um, the renewed, I know you served in the, the 90s on the planning board, but whether you call it renewed interest or why do you want to volunteer again? At this well, um, the, yeah, the planning board was 94 to 2000, but I, I didn't uh, disappear after that. I've, been, I've served on any number of task force committees um, uh, in between them. Like I said, like I mentioned, I'm currently on the uh, London Area Housing and Redevelopment Authority, um, but I've served on the Energy Efficiency Task Force back a few years ago as chairman of that, um, the building uh, committee for the police station, as uh, I was a member of that, and the, oh, the you know, historical I've, property, historical property. Yes. Thank you. I, I was just about to add, and there's ones that I'm forgetting about. <laughs> but, mm. um, so I've been. I just, I just, just like to stay involved and connected to the town um, through that type of involvement. But I, I, I don't want to, you know, and I don't mind jumping around. I just don't want to do too much at any one time. So right. um, we meet once a month uh, at the um, 
redevelopment authority, and it's very slow right now because of the economy, and we focus on the area up by the airport, and there's not a lot happening, so our meetings are um, uh, low-key at the moment, and, uh, and I understand that this uh, is a year or so long uh, committee, and it's uh, one, once an, um, one month a night, and, uh, and that, the heavy lifting actually is done by the staff, and uh, we just provide some guidance, so I, I could commit the time to that if, uh, if my services are needed. Okay, thanks. Dana? Uh, well, I think he's answered most of the questions. He obviously, uh, he's served on enough committees and he's been previously on the planning board, so he he knows what he's getting into. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you for stepping up. Russ was much more heavily involved with the 97 master plan when Heron right. James were doing that. Right, yeah. yeah, I recall that. So. Mm. Chuck, we served together on the historical properties. Yes, we did. Uh, commission and um, I thank you for your all your activities on behalf of the town. Sure, Chuck. Mary. Let's not forget the Booth Boys. You are on the old home day committee that's as right. well. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Although I've been missing in action this year, but I, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll be there when it comes time to that's get right. the booth set up. So. That's right. So thank you, Russ, for sure. volunteering. Appreciate sure. it. Yep. And thank well, you very much, Russ. All right. Lisa. Thanks. Um, my first question is, uh, as a business owner here in town, mm -hmm. what, what do you see as the greatest impact to the town? Uh, as, a business business. as a business owner? Um, well, our business, as, as it turns out, directly abuts um, what Woodmont Commons. Um, we're actually surrounded by orchards on, on two, two of the sides back there. So when that comes in, that, that may impact it, um, but I'm not necessarily thinking it's going to impact it negatively. Um, uh, but there's, there's obviously something's going to happen there. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm keeping my eyes and ears on the ground about that. I think as uh, more in my position with the uh, um, redevelopment authority and as a, just as a resident, in general, I think a bigger impact, in my uh, point, uh, a long-term impact for the town is actually what happens up around the airport and all that land. It's much, much more land, much more uh, potential for tax, positive tax impact, um, and growth for businesses and um, more um, land, and more yeah, you know, more land and that kind of thing. So I, um, I know Woodmont Commons is getting a lot of attention at the moment, um, as it should. But uh, I, you know, I think two or three generations from now, what happens up around the airport and how that all gets developed is actually going to have a bigger impact on the town. Great, thank you. Russ, <coughs> thanks uh, for stepping up. Uh, seeing that you've had this, this wealth over many years and uh, about the town and different aspects of it, mm -hmm. um, I, I always think High Science 2020. Uh, w what, what do you think you would have done differently um, over, over the course of those years, I would like to have seen things differently done um, if, if you could go back. Um, uh, uh, that's a good one. I, I, I may you have. Built a, an, an auditorium, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely in favor of, uh, of an auditorium. I, I wasn't in favor of the one that was proposed no. some years back. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I think that was too big, too, one step too big. Um, uh, but certainly keeping. Um, uh, keeping our town and school facilities um, up to up to snuff, so to speak, um, is is a priority of mine. Um, you know that was it's too bad that that hasn't come back to life. You know a little bit more front burner because um, I think something can be done. Um, it was it was that thirty million dollar you know proposal of what of what you know, <laughs> that that I think scared a lot of people away, and it, it's too bad that energy. So that, you know that's a, that's a good example. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, fairly involved with the uh, AES um, when that came in, and that was very decisive, uh, divisive, I think, um, as Mary uh, alluded to earlier. Um, uh, hopefully, Woodmont Commons won't get anywhere near that. Um, I don't know if I would have done anything differently, because I, you know, I had a position on it and it's, it's, it's stuck to it, but um, lost some friends and made some, you know, had some people that I didn't even know become my <laughs> enemies at, at that point in time. That's just a part of, you know, uh, you know, as you all know, it's part of being involved with. Um, Public service and, and uh, you know state in your state in your position and, and uh, not being swayed and swayed by it. But uh, those were not fun days. Um, but
but uh, yeah, that, you know, I can't I can't really think of any disasters that I would have I would have uh, done differently. To be honest with you, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, sure. Russ, and uh, get some good uh, good volunteers. So. Yeah, it sounds like you do. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Okay. And let's see. Last but not least, uh, Deb Paul. Please come She's down also here. She's in the purple category. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that, Mary? She's also in the purple category. Oh, she is? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't that stand for royalty? There you go. Why not? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that sounds good. Isn't it? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I'll start uh, with your questions. I'll start with Chris again. As long as I don't have to call you the Duchess of Cornwall. I'm all <laughs> I, a similar question to Russ. That, you know, you worked, you have business in, in town. You're also interested in the at large. Is there a preference for you in terms of one or two of those positions? Um, no, no, there isn't. I mean, the the. The ultimate thing is to do the greater good for the town of Londonderry, whether you're looking for a business perspective, and in that case, um, it depends on whose business you're looking at. Are you looking for big business, factory, manufacturing, little guys? Every single one of those have a different agenda and, and a different purpose, and you have to look at things differently because they have all different needs, wants, and desires. So that all has to be, just as, as residents do, You've, you know, people who just need a one-bedroom apartment, and people who need these big things and whatever. It's the same sort of thing, so it doesn't really matter. It's, the matter is to get the ideas, the um, flowing, and the perspective fresh, and um, to just take in every single option and value there is out there. Okay, and from my perspective too, you kind of represent the, the northern, northern area of the town too, so. Yeah, I, I do want to say one thing about that. I want to commend everyone, whoever came up with that idea, of dividing things into three separate areas, there, are, there is a distinct difference in all three parts of the town. Not only that we have separate fire stations and separate schools, it really is a different way of life in the north end of town. There are things that impact us that people who live in the south end have no clue what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as in the center of town. And, I, and whoever came up with that, was it you, Tim? Yeah, right. It was from 03 when we did the master. <laughs> <That's when we're laughs> I just think it's a great thing, so I do want to. The, the people in the south part of town, unless they live in rolling meadows, don't duck when a plane comes over. Well, and, 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 and they also don't, they have little roads that they don't have to take their life in their hand just to get to the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we, we know your background well enough, so I, I don't really have questions about your qualifications for you know, eminently qualified. So. Thank you. I agree with Chris. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Rick. So all set. Thanks, Thanks Deb. Scott. Oh, you are nice. Dina. Yeah, thank you, Deb, for stepping up. Uh, you, uh, you're going to be able to put in the devotion and uh, commitment to uh, support the Master Plan Steering Committee? Um, I don't see why I shouldn't be able to. I, uh, I'll put this out on the table because I'm sure this is where this question's coming from. I was appointed a while back to the Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission. Um, when I first got appointed, the economy was well, and I had full staff, and I was able to leave work at 10 o'clock in the day to go up there and, and do that, and I did it for two and a half years, almost every single meeting, and other meetings that went along with it, like the Metro and uh, what have you. Due to the economy and having to lay off people, cut back staff part-time, plus Tuesday being my deadline day, which is like the most important day, I have not been able to attend. But I have been going to Metro groups. I do stay in phone contact and email contact with, I want to say, six out of the other members on the board on a regular basis. So I do try to keep in touch with them. I know it's not as good as it should be, but hopefully things will pick up and I'll be able to start going back. But these are at night, so there shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I mean, I, I know what the commitment is because I served on a master plan committee and, mm -hmm. you know, we just want to make sure that the people we put there well, are I totally do understand it, and I, I did do the best towns a long time ago. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. And thank you for all of the work that you do for the town and we've talked enough and been together enough, so I don't have any questions. <laughs> Thanks.
Mary. Thanks. No, nope. thank you for um, stepping up, Deb. I appreciate it, and I don't have any questions either. Thank you. I think it'd make a nice addition. No questions. I'm just I'm kind of amazed you're volunteering for something else. You do so much around town, and you have a ton of energy. And uh, I'd sort of like to see you doing the business angle on it. And if we had to, right. we had to make a decision about that, mostly because Russ's business is in South London area, and since we seem to be shy on a South London area person, that seems to be the. Maybe a tenuous connection, but if we could angle that around, yeah, so we have the business experience and the contacts in town. Well, you know, what do they say? If you want something done, give it to a busy person. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deb, for stepping up. And uh, no, I, have, I don't have questions at this time. Hi, Deb. Um, hey. Thanks for stepping up. Uh, I think it's, my question would be along the the same lines as the uh, the questions that I have. What uh, what do you think is going to be the most challenging things that we, we have to face in this town over the next several years? Well, I think the going back to when we first did the best towns, which was a lot more citizen input, um, one of the biggest challenges I saw was clearly defining what Londonderry wanted to be. You have mixed ideas. You know, some people want it to be more city-like, and some people want it to be more country-like, and I think that the clear definition, it's easier to, if it's like having a business plan. If you know what you want your company to do as opposed to kind of changing all the time, it, um, it makes it a lot easier to stay on track. Um, for example, if you start out and say, oh, I want to I wanna do a newspaper, and you say, I'm going to do a weekly, and then you say, I do a weekly, I want to do a daily, and I want to do a magazine, I want to do that, then the core disappears. But if you stay focused and, and, and clearly define what it is Londonderry wants to look like and wants to be in five years, ten years, and modify it to fit the people at the time, then you stay on track. As far as what's going to happen, who knows? I mean, who knows if we're ever going to dig out of this economy? And who knows if gas isn't going to go to $8 a gallon and we will have to walk everywhere? Or take a horse. <laughs> I mean, you don't know. You don't know. But I don't see that. Any, I don't ever see problems. Everything, there are no problems. There are only solutions. And if you just keep working and asking questions and digging, you'll find them. Thanks. That's just me. Okay. And thank you for volunteering also. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, do we have to take a horse to work on the zoning change? You were the horses? <laughs> you got well, why is there like the chickens? <laughs> oh, God. Because <laughs> actually where it started from was uh, the horses. So it's, uh, <laughs> way back. Um, so really we have uh, you know, three at-large positions in the business community uh, position. Correct. Yeah. So it's up to the board on how to... Uh, do we have it. to make motions for this or uh, just do it by consensus? Yeah. <laughs> so... Is there anybody, I mean, I, I, so Russ, are you the closest one who lives to the, to the south? I could be. Um, yeah, just Probably. Of, uh, tax, no, I know where you are. And, I in, mean, in terms of where they are geographically, Russ would be the furthest south, yes. Right. It's up to the board. <laughs> so is it all well qualified? Are we set to make a decision tonight? Is that something that we wanted to come out of this meeting with? A decision? Yeah. It, it, it does, again, it, it's just a matter of determining who the three at large are. The, the, the designations are, are an ideal. If we had them, great. If we don't, you know, we still have three at large members. So mm -hmm. ultimately, it's a decision as to who, who's the business community representative out yeah. of Russ or both Deb. Deb and Russ are members of the business community. Right. And but, okay. John, um, it, I'd like to see if we could postpone it to the June 8th for a decision so one we can think about it and one obviously we can put out a, uh, a, a, a public statement to say anyone from the south because uh, you know to get a better geographical sense. It's already been done. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's so. the thing. <laughs> we can't really uh, do anything you know, as far as okay. I think we've got I I think think we've four, four, four great four candidates yeah. to yeah. grab them quick before they change their mind. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So, so, so it's just Decide who, who for the business. Uh, uh, Deb put in her letter here that she works closely with the local businesses, right. so she put it in her letter so I, she I can be the business one. Okay, I think that makes sense. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. okay, and then the other three are at large, uh, right? Okay, and yep. we can have Mary be the north because she's had experience living in the north, and Barbara can be the central, and us can be the south. 
I will make that accordingly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank we, you all very much. Yes, we appreciate it. We can get our, our master planning process started. Okay. Uh, continuing here with our meeting. Uh, we have new plans. And uh, new, we only have one uh, hearing tonight, and that's Jeffrey Young, tax map number 16, lot 85. This is an application acceptance of a public hearing for a site plan for a change of use, which is residential to professional office and related site improvements. Uh, first thing we need to do is accept the application as complete. Once we've done that, that starts a 65 day time frame in which the board has to render a decision. Yes or no, or you know, conditional approval. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, there are four outstanding checklist items, all of which are waiver requests. Uh, assuming the board grants those waivers, staff recommends the application be accepted as complete. Uh, those four waivers are as listed in the staff recommendation memo. Uh, first, uh, the applicant has not provided a separate landscape plan as required by the regulations. Staff recommends granting the waiver as the limited area of disturbance associated with the plan, along with the preservation of much of the existing vegetation, meets the intent of the regulations. Secondly, the application applicant has not provided an illumination plan as required by the regulations. Uh, again, we recommend granting the waiver. The only site lighting shown in the plans exists on the site today. Uh, the plan does propose signage lighting, but staff is comfortable with this being handled as a proposed precedent condition, uh, which we'll discuss uh, later, later on in the public hearing. Uh, thirdly, uh, the applicant has not provided cert surveyor certification for the boundaries required by the regulations. Uh, again, we recommend granting this waiver as the boundary has been determined utilizing plans of record, uh, plans on record with the town, and given the limited nature of the improvements associated with the change of use, the expense of the full boundary survey is not reasonably justified. Lastly, the applicant has not provided all required boundary monuments as required by the regulations. Again, we recommend granting the waiver as the missing monuments are either located within wetlands or the area taken by NHDOT for improvements to Route 28. And again, without a full boundary survey, they're not able to set those points. Uh, so again, we recommend the four waivers, and assuming the board is uh, comfortable with those and grants them, we would recommend the application be accepted. Okay, uh, board have any questions? Uh, and we can proceed to the, uh, the waivers. So move and, to accept and, the um, and, uh, application as it is. Do the waivers yeah. first. Do the waivers, first. waivers yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, one is uh, section 3.09 and 4.14e. The next one is sections uh, 3.13 and 4.16. The next is section 4.12.b. And uh, the last request here is sections 3.02 and 4.12.c.4. The motion could be for all four based on staff recommendation and the applicant's April 15 letter. So yeah. moved. So moved. No. Okay. Second. Mary's made the motion. Dana has the second. Any discussion by the board? Seeing that all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Sentence share was affirmative. And the, uh, the waivers have been granted, which uh, will deem uh, you can. Now, staff would recommend the application be accepted as complete. And I'll take a motion. So, move. Okay, motion. second. Motion by Dan and second by Mary for acceptance of the application as being complete. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstentions, Chair affirmative, and the application has been accepted as complete. We'll start a public hearing, and uh, you have the stage there, Jack. And just Thank identify you. yourself for our records, please. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Jack Semplinski. I'm with Benchmark Engineering. Also with me is Mr. Jeff Young, who is the property owner. Uh, this particular property is located on the easterly side of Route 28, uh, Rockingham Road. It's uh, about three acres, just over three acres in size, uh, just, and also just over 200 feet of street frontage onto Route 28. Uh, at present time, the property is improved with uh, residential duplex uh, and driveway, leaching field, and a well. Uh, towards the rear of the property, there was a good-sized wetland, and also this property also borders an old uh, railroad truck in the rear. The property is zoned uh, commercial too. Uh, what Mr. Young would like to do is he would like to run his insurance agency out of the <coughs> northerly portion of the duplex while living on the other side. Uh, the plan that's before you is actually presented in two phases. The first phase would be to basically for Mr. Young to occupy the southerly portion of the duplex as his living residence and run 
an orderly portion as an office uh, for insurance agency which he owns. At a later date, he's thinking that he will convert the entire property to office, and that's why the, there are two phases to this particular plan. I believe uh, the plan has been through review by the staff and also by Stantec. I think we satisfied all the regulations. Uh, there will be, we will be retaining existing well and existing septic system. And as Tim mentioned, the state will be taking a portion of this, of this property for 28 improvements. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, we'll go through staff first, the board, and then uh, to the public. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I uh, have uh, five or six uh, design review items. Item number one, we recommend the applicant to mention the indicated loading area, handicaps, parking space, and adjacent stripe space on the plan for proper construction. Item two, proposed 350 contour appears to be missing on a topo plan west of the handicapped parking space. We're requesting that they review and update as necessary for proper construction. Item three, project details on sheet six in indicate uh, several details that are similar to the town standards. Uh, we recommend the applicant remove the similar details from the plan set and provide a note referencing the uh, town of London area typical details. Additionally, we're requesting that they update the plan set to include the appropriate table for the detention pond basin outlet, as well as uh, specifying the type of erosion control blanket to be placed along the swell in the detail. Item four, we're requesting that they update the detention pond analysis of the drainage report to properly indicate the proposed outlet weir configuration consistent with the proposed device used. And lastly, item number five, DOT permit appears to indicate a new permit would be needed for phase two of the project. We recommend the applicant provide a note on the plans accordingly or provide additional documentation from DOT to the town clarifying that an updated permit is not necessary for phase two. That's all we have. Okay, thanks, <clears throat> Tim. Uh, the only thing I'd like to point out, uh, the staff is recommending conditional approval of the application tonight. The only non-standard uh, condition, which I had mentioned during the waivers, is uh, listed as item two under the pressing conditions in the staff recommendation memo. Uh, we're recommending that the planning board add a condition that the applicant shall revise the sign detail to indicate downcast or gooseneck exterior illumination of the proposed sign, as was recommended by the Heritage Commission last week. Outside of that, I uh, have nothing else to add. Okay. Thanks, Tim. I'll start the other end uh, with John. Yeah. You all set? Lisa? Yeah, I'm all set. Laura? I'm all set. Mary? All set. Chuck? All set. It's like roll call here. <laughs> <laughs> Dana? Nothing. I'm good. Scott? I don't have any problem with it. Most of the residentials over there are going commercial now anyway. Just to note, there is a variance to allow for the split residential and commercial use that was granted by the zoning board for this property. Yes, okay, thanks. Chris? Present. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any of butters, anyone uh, from the public have any questions, comments, or concerns uh, about the site plan? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the uh, board. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we conditionally approve the site plan for Jeffrey Young, map 16, lot 85, with the uh, conditions outlined in the memorandum dated June 1st, 2011 to the Planning Board from the Department of Public Works, and with the condition on the signage that Tim mentioned. Second. Motion made, <coughs> excuse me, motion made by Dana, second by Mary. <laughs> Any uh, discussion by the board? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Abstentions, Chair, what's affirmative? And uh, site plan is conditionally approved. Thank you. It was easy, Jack, huh? <laughs> Not like oh, the old days. A real tough nights for me. <laughs> <laughs> Come back next week. <laughs> okay, uh, we have any uh, other business? Well, Mr. Chair, at the risk of um, starting another brouhaha, I'd like to um, you're, you're bring up you're reading my mind. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing about Woodmont again. And Tim and I had a discussion about this at, at, on the It's Your Choice show, live and Agenda in item. color. Hmm? Agenda item. Agenda item, sorry. Um, and he explained further the idea of um, having it the first meeting of the month. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, you know, given that we, it's 810, 
and we're done. It makes sense that we schedule our discussions for Woodmont the first meeting of the month. And then if, the, if we do see that the you know, new plans are coming and it would mean later and later hour, then we could move it to a third meeting. But I think Laura's suggestion is, is great. Tim explained the thing about the waiver. I mean, the, the deadlines, the and, deadlines the, and the meeting notices. Public meeting notices, correct. But um, I don't think that'll affect Woodmont at this point. Not until they go to a formal application. Right. Not until they go to a formal application. So as of right now, I think we should. I mean, obviously next week we're 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 so looking forward to having our, our discussion with them, um, along with the few other things that are on the agenda. But next month, I think we should consider having it as the first meeting. As the, uh, the, board the one thing I would ask you to do is look at your tentative July agenda. <laughs> I was going to ask what's on for July. Okay, so we have tons. I have, I have potentially four projects for the first meeting in July. Oh, nice. Oh, good. Tentative. At what, at what uh, point uh, does a uh, decision need to be made? Uh, well, I think we know the deadline when these have to be in. The de I will have uh, the deadline for the first meeting of July is the third week of June, so it'll be the week after next week's meeting. Um, and again, I think the, the folks from Woodmont are certainly willing to shift to another meeting. Uh, and I think uh, if the board is looking to get some feedback from me after the deadline, I can certainly let you know what it looks like for July. And uh, that decision can be made at that point, and we can publicize that appropriately. Okay. Would Would the board like to? Uh, I'd like do, to do try that? it. See how it goes. Yeah. Or July, because sure. that July not first July. July meeting, if all four of those things come. Yeah. In, I mean, if the tentatives meeting. aren't aren't there, then it would be good to slot Woodmont in there. I, I don't have that in but front of me. Could you refresh my memory? Because I know there's you have a couple Ronnie, of them. Mill Pond. Mill Pond. Yeah. Yeah. Ronnie will definitely be there. Milpon is Galakas. Galakas will be there. On one twenty four. And Rocking Rock. Rock that's Ham likely Road. to be that's the gas station that we just met at so the three. Three. That's I'd say three with relative confidence will be there on that agenda. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my my personal feeling is that you know Woodmont's important enough, and it, we should move to a separate night. We're doing a disservice to the public and to ourselves by trying to cram everything in and going till midnight, one, two in the morning, and we're spending four hours on Woodmont and then trying to rush everything else through. Myself, I would much rather do it on a third night. It's its own, own thing and then we're dealing with it appropriately. Yeah, I think if we, we do that, we, we would need to select an alternate date, like a third Wednesday, fourth ZBA. Wednesday of the month. Or if there's a you know problem, you know, a Tuesday night or a Thursday night. I don't know what everyone's schedule. But maybe what we should do is, is email Tim individually if uh, our preferred time for an extra meeting. You know, maybe have three, list of three to three, uh, well, what is our obligation on the second meeting is that we do have to hear plans still, right? It's the second meeting of the month is dedicated. Continued plans are definite. If we continue a plan at a first meeting, they will be on the yeah, second, second meeting, meeting the following yeah. month. Outside of that... There's no new plans that come on. No new meeting. plans are presented for the second meeting of the month. The second meeting of the month is purely for conceptual discussions, ordinance regulation, <laughs> master plan, long-term planning type of needs, and uh, workshop discussions. Uh, I think we're actually... If, depending on what happens next week. Uh, there, there may be a couple of relatively brief public hearings for some zoning changes that would be on July for the second meeting. So the second meeting of July doesn't look that bad right now. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I thought we have to move some of those, those, those things into the... the that's that's certainly an alternative. Again, it, the, to it's... To dedicate the second meeting to more being, you know... It's certainly up to the board. The, 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 the loan thing that would run into problems if we, if we have continued plans like we had with the, uh, the Chinberg subdivision. Yeah. At the last meeting, I asked the question of the developer, at what point would they be ready to propose something to us so then they could get on the agenda as a new item or whatnot with a site plan and whatnot. And I was told we were very close. And when I asked what that meant, that meant beginning of summer, end of summer, next year, what does that mean? 
I, I believe the response was this summer, June, July. Now, I don't see that in June, perhaps July. I guess my point being that if we're this close to having them on agenda items uh, for, for new business, if you will, on the first meeting of the month, I don't understand why we're having this conversation. It's, it's really hard to tell. To it, again, it, it's completely at the applicant's option at this right. point when they decide to go formal. Uh, the level and amount of preliminary discussions they want to have is purely up to them at this point. Um, I think from my understanding and conversations with the developer and his representatives, they're, they're very close to finalizing what the land use mix is going to be. The next step is how much preliminary discussion before an application is filed do they want to have on traffic and infrastructure and things of that nature. Uh, we're in the midst of working as staff with the applicant to determine you know, what we need to look at in terms of the traffic. We haven't come to an agreement yet on what exactly needs to be part of that discussion and we continue to have those discussions. So I would expect that uh, the meeting next week uh, finalizing hopefully the comfort level between the developer and the planning board in terms of the land use and then start preliminarily talking about some of the major, the, the actual impacts and the analysis that needs to take place at that point. So I really, I think the land use really has been the big time consuming part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, when we actually get into reviewing analysis of their uh, studies on infrastructure and traffic, I don't know that it's going to take four hours for us to go through those discussions. Will it? I don't know. I can't predict uh, specifically, but uh, again, it's either way, if the board wanted to move the conceptual stuff to the first meeting, you could do that to reserve the second meeting for Woodmont. You could move Woodmont to the first meeting. It's, it's really at the, the board's discretion. Uh, it's really the, the regulations call for the first meeting to be new plans, the second meeting to do that, but it's always within the planning board's purview to waive those regulations to accommodate the schedule however they see fit. Could, could we see next week what kind of bites they might be able to define for us over the course of the next few weeks? They may come in with a much better sense of, okay, <clears throat> we've got these three, four segments we need to get covered. Maybe it's two segments. Mm -hmm. But so that we can kind of yeah. plan out, okay, it's this maybe would be workable on these two nights. I would like to see I, I, someone at the end of the desk room ask that perhaps there could be kind of a preview night before they actually formally submit their plan to us, that maybe there could be one just a preview. Um, and something like that might be a real good thing to have on a separate night. Um, but, I, you know, I agree. I'm not sure we need to have ongoing mm -hmm. third nights for this if, at this stage, but maybe we we'll look at a better idea next week of what I, I fights think, we can do. I take think off. a worthwhile question for the board to ask next week will be at what point do they anticipate stopping conceptual and moving to an application? At, what do they want to have? What areas do they want to see discussed preliminarily? Yes. And which of those things that they're going to just deal with at the, at the actual well, application stage? And, and Tim, you had said, you know, the developer can keep coming back and, and asking these questions, but we as a board don't have to entertain this for hours upon hours either. So we can, the way I see it as next, next meeting, um, I, you know, I see on the way the agenda works, you have Woodmont up front again and, and these other things falling behind it. My suggestion either is either put those other things first before Woodmont or put a time limit on how long, what, what items of discussion we're going to try to get through and if so, in what block of time and if we don't get to them, well, I'm sorry, but we have some other business to attend to attend to that business and then continue with Woodmont later in the evening or, or table it for the next month. Certainly within the board's purview. Yeah, I know last time it was probably at least two and a half, uh, almost three hours of just getting through the, uh, the wooden one itself, I, which, uh, I which think, is I valuable, of course. I but think we, we keep more woodmont up front, though, because a lot of folks were coming for that and didn't want to sit mm -hmm. through all the other things. Right. But we set some time limit of uh, certainly for the next meeting. The meeting in July, uh, the, the, the 13th, that's lightweight. We, you know, we, we we don't have a lot of other things on there for that for that, that agenda right now, so I think you could probably have, again, you know, be able to play it by ear in that meeting and say, well, you know, we've got a, a cutoff time of how long we're going to discuss, but if there isn't a lot of other business to do, we could have to run longer on that meeting. And Mr. Chairman, could I suggest that we we set it for an hour discussion with Woodmont, and at that point we we cease, and we continue with the other business that's on the agenda, and at the end of that, if we want to continue up, fine, or table it till the next time. Yeah, maybe that's what we could try. 
I think what takes time also is, is the input from the public input, mm -hmm. which is you know hard. hard and to, and know, I'm hard thinking hard. the hour is not necessarily with the with the public input because yeah. didn't we hold the public input till the end last time? Yes. So yeah. if we if well, we, we limit we had the a break. we had some input in the middle and then at the, at the end. So okay. So we could probably. I don't know, think you're going to end up having that detailed an item by item, area by area discussion coming yeah. out next week. I think you're going to be talking more of the tweaking and the suggestions that came out of last month's meeting and highlighting what they've done. Yeah, and one thing changes. we've got to remember is the questions that have been submitted by Jack Belvey at all to tackle some of those. I think at least half of them we've probably reacted have been answered from the discussions we've had already, but I think people like to see things a nice compact thing and then, uh, you know, it's something that we can't, uh, you know, we probably just uh, to go through, I think, because certain people are looking for uh, they probably have their specific uh, questions. Sure, sure. Who, who they are, I have no idea, but at least we can make uh, make an attempt at, uh, at that you know, as a board. It doesn't have to uh, be uh, time consuming or anything. Some of them, are, I think, are very very quick answers anyway. Mm -hmm. A lot uh, to keep in mind for next week. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean. Uh, we'll, we'll put put the questions question answering off two times, and, and some people seem to get disturbed by it. So uh, we're gonna get to well, it. I, but I don't believe that we need to spend a huge amount of time going through all of those questions and answering them when they've already been answered. Right. We can we can go through this. But, what, you know what's been answered is you know I think we know what was been answered anyway. Right. So I don't think we've been putting them up. I just don't think we've been saying, oh, and this is question it, it, number 12 on the has list. Has that been collated at this point? I have a PowerPoint that's like 37 pages long, yes. Um, I w the only thing I would suggest is that if we're going to review that next week, that we have some form of media or copy for the, for the public to be able to review that as well. Sure. It's everything that's been presented to this point is on the town's Woodmont page. I have the list of questions linked on there as well. When, oh, when, when is our... Uh, our uh, web page going to be updated? That is mainly because I had a, uh, a computer failure on my computer. I'm actually on a new PC and I have not yet gotten uh, the website updating software loaded on the new PC. Oh, okay. I did talk with the IT people today. Uh, there's potential for me getting my old hard drive installed on a new computer which has all the stuff I need on it. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm going to be given remote access uh, to the IT department's version of that software. So I should be able to get something done by the end of the week oh, to okay. update uh, minutes and agendas and whatnot. Yeah. I, I think another option is, is at least get you know, some response to the questions up on the website so we don't have to take time here. That's, that's, that's a decision of the board anyway to, to do. We can probably bring that up. Take that up next. Uh, well, who's next answering week? those questions? Is hmm? the developer answering those questions? There are some directed to the planning board. There are some directed to the developer, and there are some that are miscellaneous. Could be both. Motion or, to adjourn. Okay. Second. Uh, motion to adjourn by Mary. Second by Rick. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.